So here's a topic that's going to get me even angrier than um, remembering what James Charles' face looks like and voice sounds like, which I have to say was a great pregame for how mad I'm going to get in this segment. Nice and all fired up talking about that gay devil. Now let's talk about the globalist devils. Let's talk about the fact that COVID mandates are coming back. Y'all know. I'm one of the few, and I will say this, I'm one of the few commentators on the right that stuck with talking about the travesty of 2020 and lockdowns and COVID and all that for years. Even like when people forgot about it, for whatever reason, it seems like the entirety of the right once Dylan Mulvaney uploaded his first TikTok, completely forgot about the important conversations that were happening based around freedom, the power of government, tyranny. You know those things that are like the foundational bedrock of like conservatism and being on the right? Those important conversations, they were all dropped the moment Dylan Mulvaney got on TikTok. And for the past two years, we've only been talking about Dylan Mulvaney. I say we because, of course, I've talked about Dylan Mulvaney, but I also, that's my lane. I'm trans. Hi. I'm the T. I can talk about it. If every video I uploaded was about Dylan Mulvaney, that would be in my lane. And yet and still, I've talked about him less than almost anyone else. But I'm getting off on a tangent. The point is what I'm trying to say is it seems as if we all lived through lockdowns, uh, the collective trauma of 2020, 2021, and the important conversations about how to, you know, not let the government do that again, not stamp on constitutional rights again, not shut the country down and destroy everyone's mental health again. Those conversations just stopped once everything opened back up. Um, Nothing really communicates how useless the Republican Party is based on the fact that now there's articles coming up like COVID mandates coming back, COVID mandates on flights coming soon, surge, you know, start talking about locking down again. And everyone on the right is like, oh, my God, can you believe they're talking about COVID again? Can you believe they're going to lock us down again? Yeah, that's actually what happens um, when you allow them to do that. They did it once. Why would they not do it again? What have you guys done? For the past few years to ensure that they don't do it again nothing yeah that's what's the point of voting anymore i don't know i'm feeling very politically homeless about this whole thing but anyways so this all started <laughs> amazingly with alec jones um saying that tsa informants were giving him a heads up that covid mandates are coming back and uh amazingly one day later one day later there's articles everywhere about how it's coming back and it's confirmed and, you know, colleges and studios in Hollywood and whatever. Y'all can give Alex Jones his flowers anytime. Let's watch that, though, and then we'll get back to this. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a call yesterday. An individual was in town. And they wanted to meet with me that I know well. And they are a high-level manager in the TSA. They said, you got to warn people. Tuesday, we got called in, the managers, and told that by the middle of September, that the new policy is being written, that this is done. They were told this is happening. This is not hypothetical. You will all have to wear masks again, and so will airport employees. They were told, we expect by December a return to the full COVID protocol of 2020-2021. So these people are returning. You think they're not coming back? Watch this. Masking is not an option. The only thing that you're making optional is whether or not disabled people and immunocompromised people get to live. That is the option that you're making. And you are consistently choosing your own comfort over marginalized people's lives. And you know what that is? That's white supremacy in action. Wow. Clap if you care. All right, let's move on. First of all, y'all will call anything white supremacy. I'm pretty sure y'all could look at an orange piece of paper and find a way to say that that is white supremacy. Right? So we'll even just set that to the side for a second and get to arguably, I guess it's up in the air, the more dimension part of what you said. 
you, <laughs> I don't even know what to call you, commie, communist, busybody, piece of shit, uh, choosing your own comfort. Yeah, yeah, I choose me. Letting y'all know that now. Public service announcement. Blair will be choosing her when the rest of the world decides to lock down. Blair will be choosing her. Blair will be doing what she wants to do, right? I have one life to live. Y'all took a lot of my time with all this shit last time. Not going to happen again. No, no. If you're immunocompromised, if you are at higher risk, guess whose responsibility that isn't? Mine. Does that sound cold? Does that sound cruel? Sure. Is life fair? No. Life is not fair. And I would never go out of my way to do anything, to harm anyone. But if you are someone who can't step outside without getting sick, that is a problem that is always going to exist for you, whether or not we're, you know, having government mandates about it or not. It, it, I feel empathy for you. And I am so sorry that that has happened to you, whatever has caused you to have that state or that condition. Genuinely. That's not my fault. That's not on me to protect you. Right? And the amount of lies that we're told... During that time, get the shot. It's not for you. It's for other people. Oh, and then it comes out, you know, that doesn't actually stop transmission. But we just had billions of people take it all in one fell swoop, telling them that it would, right? Same goes with the mask. If it works, it'll work on your face. And I am so happy for you. I will not be putting it on. Do we got to talk about how wearing dirty masks, which I saw a lot of y'all. I saw... I was in an airport. I saw a man blow his nose inside the mask and keep the mask on. I will not be doing that to myself. No, no. So know that, commies. I am just going to make it very clear now. I will not be complying with a single COVID mandate. That means masks. That means whatever shot that they've convinced you is normal to receive at McDonald's, Rite Aid, Burger King, right? That they've convinced you the second it comes out, within seconds, it's ready to take. Um, no, I won't be doing that. That includes lockdowns. That includes staying in my house and letting my mental health deteriorate for the sake of your feelings. No, no. See, this is what y'all don't get. <laughs> let's be real, Karen. And let's be really real because a lot of you are Karens without even knowing it. A lot of y'all will go and talk about how someone is a Karen because they complained at, you know, Target. Maybe, you know, the employees pissed her off. Now she's talking to the manager, right? A lot of y'all will call someone a Karen with a quickness for complaining to the manager, but then proceed to police and mandate the lives of strangers emotionally, right? You use your emotions to bully and manage the lives and choices of free thinking other individual people. Disgusting. Disgusting. I will never understand how y'all don't consider people who go around screaming at people in the face to put a mask on. Those aren't Karens to you. That's the ultimate Karen to me. Ma'am, why do you think you have authority over me at all? Why do you think you can dictate what I do with my body, my life, my choices at all? Oh, my body, my choice, right? Right. So that was all bullshit. So yeah, I'm just making it very clear. You know, I don't really care. I don't really care how many of you guys are going to fall for it again. I don't really care how many of you guys are making choices about what you want to do and you want to wear six face shields and a mask on top. You're free to do so. And not one ounce of me even was mad about that during the thick of the panini. I was like, okay, well, they do what they do. I just wish they would let me do what I do. Right? 
Right. Still America. Not China yet, bitch. And that's really the gag because a lot of y'all are fucking commies. A lot of y'all are fucking commies without knowing it. A lot of y'all are Karens without fucking knowing it. And they will reveal themselves once these mandates really come back in the thick of it. Because then y'all are going to start trying to control other people. Snitching to 911. Oh, Blair's having a house party next door. Oh, we need the feds to go in and raid people's businesses and shut down their livelihoods, destroy their families, and then offer them like $1,600 in a year for it, but then send billions and billions and billions to Ukraine. Right. So yeah, a just announcement, I will not be complying. And uh, you can call me a grandma killer right now. You can call me a bad person. You can call me anything that your, you know, little troglodyte brain finds comfort in saying and anything that lets you feel like you're taking back a little bit of control by not being able to control me because that's the fact. You can't control me. One thing that became very apparent to me during Miss Corona lockdowns, you know, the collectivist hellhole where everyone became a communist, uh, was that it empowered the losers of society, right? It empowered the people who have never had an ounce of power in their life. And it gave those people the ability to police others. It gave those people um, an authority role. So when they saw someone with, you know, maybe no mask on or a mask that they even felt was not, uh, you know, up to par with effectiveness, right? Like if you wore a mask that had like some bedazzle stuff on it or whatever, it was too thin, they would, they would get in your face about that. It gave those people carte blanche to harass people, to snitch on people, to be enraged about simple things. Like I remember tweeting that I was walking my dog and I got people sending me tweets like, really? You're going outside and putting people's lives at risk? Grandma killer. So it gave those people power, the losers. I told the story about how when I was living in Hollywood, which was the worst place to live during the thick of Corona or the thin of Corona, was uh, I was entering the elevator in my apartment building and a man wearing, a grown man wearing a mask and a face shield physically put his hands on me, physically pushed me out of the elevator, screaming like a little bitch, screaming like I'm Osama bin Laden, like Hitler just walked in the elevator, right? And that was because his television told him that that was an acceptable way to behave, to physically put his hands on a woman to physically put his hands on anyone half his size screaming because they weren't wearing a mask. I'm going to do what I want. And that's just what that is. So going to let it be known now. Okay. 